everybody. Mm. Good coffee. I am Christian. Welcome to um, Lazy Devs. We are Lazy Devs. You are the Lazy Dev. I am a Lazy Dev. And I will show you how to be lazy. Well, actually, we're not really lazy. We are very, very... Um, what is the opposite of lazy? Productive? Hmm. Anyways, um, we are working on this uh, breakout game. And so far, it looks really great. I mean... Um, if you if you run this, this looks like a really proper game now. Look at how lively it looks. We are adding juiciness. That's what the last episodes were all about, adding juiciness. And this game starting to look really nice and juicy. We're getting screen shakes. We're getting some really nice um, little animations. You know, there there's a screen shake. That's nice. Uh, and most importantly, there's like some really nice menu details, like you have these preview dots here. This is starting to look really proper. Something that you might have noticed is I'm not actually like changing the graphics too much. The blocks are really very simple right so far. Um, there is not really a lot I, I mess around with when it comes to graphics. We can add the graphics at the end. We can make the graphics really beautiful at the end. But the reason why I'm doing this, the reason why I want to keep the graphics really simple for now, is that I want the game to look really nice just based on the effects work we're doing and not based on the sprites that we're using. It's very easy to make sprites, to make beautiful you know, pixel art and stuff like that and think and, and have like these w really weird game that are that are kind of like like painted cardboard where it's like very, these very stiff figures doing very stiff stuff um, that is beautifully painted but it's it seems hollow and like frozen because there's like this beautiful sprites just moving you know and moving in a very very lame fashion and so if you don't paint your cardboard if you just leave it uh, ugly cardboard you have to do a lot with your cardboard to make it more interesting so so if you start out doing interesting stuff with, you, with your not very well painted cardboard and then you paint it very well that will look awesome so this is why i'm doing this this is this is for the juiciness stuff so now um, so this is what we're doing. This is basically doing awesome stuff with bad, badly painted cardboard is the juiciness stuff. And so we added like a lot of effects. We had like this blinking here. We have like these um, fading effects. All of these uh, add a lot. But um, what comes now is particles. And particles is where juiciness is. This is the beating heart of juiciness in a lot of ways. Um, Particles is where our game will start looking really amazing. And to be honest, like one of the reasons why I started this tutorial in the first place a year ago was that I really wanted to get into particles, really uh, show you some really beautiful particle effects. Now, finally, I'm here. And so we can start thinking about what kind of particles. So we have some, a couple of ideas. We have some death particles. Um, so maybe our ball, when, when, when it dies, it kind of explodes or, or like falls apart. There's like this little, really nice Mega Man, uh, like pew, 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 you know, where like um, Mega Man, when it dies, um, he's kind of like exploded into like these, like this kind of like pattern of these energy balls. Maybe something like this. Brick particles, it means when you hit a brick, the brick should splatter into particles. And then collision particles, like maybe if you hit something, any anything that in in your ball ricochets, and maybe there's like a little puff of smoke. Uh, and then of course we should add more particles in here because I have uh, and also some other pickup particles. When you pick up a pickup, it should you should have like a like a little firework in the color of the pickup, ideally, right? And then finally, a very important explosion particles. We have one block that explodes and that should look really awesome and explodey. <clears throat> okay. So actually, let me do the brick particles first. I think this is the, this is the, oh yeah, uh, one more thing. Maybe, maybe we're going to do a trail and a trail is something, uh, some, I see trails in a lot of uh, breakout games like this. So kind of like your ball leaves a little bit of trail of, of particles, like a line maybe behind you. And this is kind of like helps you, um, helps your eyes understand in which direction the ball is going. You know what? Let's start with trails. Why not? Or maybe not. I don't know. So what are particles? How are we doing particles? Well, the easiest way to think of particles is they're just pixels. 
Like that's the, that's the most basic particle, just a pixel. Um, so you might remember where we are drawing. Let me see. Yeah. So where where we are drawing, like stuff like the bricks. You know how remember how we make bricks, where we adding a brick to an array of bricks, and then we're drawing all all the bricks. Basically, we're gonna do the same thing, but for individual pixels. What? Uh, yeah, we're gonna do that. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's a very good idea. Uh, it's a very good way to add a lot of elements. And we're gonna what I want to do is I want to start expanding the system. So first we're gonna start with pixels, but later on we can maybe do like turn them into little uh, spheres. We can animate them maybe. We can make them change color. We can make them um, f be affected by gravity, and then maybe even like uh, change them into sprites. You can do all sorts of very interesting things with particles, and it's you know it's kind of like the playground is all yours. You can do whatever you want to do with particles, and the more you add to those particles, the better they become. They or not not not, not necessarily, but there's a lot of uh, potential to experiment and play around with particles. This is what I'm gonna say. Okay, so we're gonna go into our second tab, which is our our um, juiciness tab, and we're gonna do particle stuff. Okay, um, function add part. Uh, I'm not gonna spell out particle out because this is a function we're gonna use a lot, and this is gonna be a function that will accept a lot of um, uh, arguments later on. Uh, then function. I'm not exactly like, sure. Should we do the trail first? Maybe we should. We should do the trail. Let's do the trail. Spawn trail. Um, so we're gonna have function that spawns a trail particle. Uh, the add part function will add in a specific particle. Add a particle. This will spawn a trail particle. Oops, my screen is turning off here. <laughs> um, then I'm gonna do a function. It's gonna be an update function, but I'm gonna keep it in here. Update parts. Uh, this is, be, uh, is gonna be our draw, uh, our update function for the particles. And then I'm gonna do another function, draw parts. Uh, I'm keeping them in here um, because I want to do. I want all of our, my functions to be in the same tab. I don't want to be switching tabs to to edit those things. And also, these things are actually just the particles. So they're not drawing like the entire game. These other tabs, I think, uh, are good to be reserved for like the entire like overall function. But these are just parts of those functions. Okay. Let me create a new particles. Part. Uh, I'm gonna call it part. I know it's a bit. Um, okay. Uh, it. I don't like this too much because this is. Um, um, the part might be a, a bit misleading. It's. It's not part. It's not a part. It's a particle. It's not a part. A part is something else, like part of something, right? Um, but um, I want to keep this variable name very short, so that I, 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 th I think I'm gonna go with part. And so let's let's do the add part. What are what's happening when we when we adding a particle? Well, um, oh my gosh, this keyboard! I love it. Local underscore p. That's gonna be our particle. Um, equals so we're gonna create a new particle and then we're gonna go p so when we're adding a particle obviously the first thing we want to do is we're gonna put it at an x and an or y position that's kind of like the most basic thing you want to do with a particle and then maybe we're gonna do a type of a particle just for future reference um oh yeah and also and then uh, we're gonna do. Oh, no, no, let's go type. And then age. Max age. Um, 
So what is H? How, why, why are we dealing with H? So the problem is we are going to add particles to an array of, of, of array of a ton of particles. We kind of keep adding particles on top of it, right? And so eventually those particles have to go because we have too much particles on the screen. Because if we just keep adding particles, they will just overflow the screen and overflow our memory. And, and so we're going to have to devise a way of removing particles from this array again. Old particles should no longer stick around. And the way of the easiest way of doing is to is to add um, to track how old they are, how many frames there appeared on the screen already, and so if they appeared for like you know sixty frames or a second already, then we can start removing them from 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 the from the array again, and that's age. That's how what we call what we refer to as age. Um, so we want want each particle to have an age and also have like a maximum age. When it reaches the maximum age, it dies. Okay. So uh, particle x equals. So we're gonna take the. This function will just take the information from the um, from the arguments and we'll just plug them into the particle. So p x equals underscore x and so forth. And at the end we're gonna go part um, no, add. Part, what, is that how add works? I forgot how add works. Oh my gosh. Um, equal eight. Add. How does it add work? Table. Okay, that's good. Um, part underscore p. And again, uh, if you're having trouble to so realize what we're doing here, we're creating a. We did this uh, with bricks before, so maybe you want to go back to the bricks function where we added our objects understanding to bricks. Um, but what we're doing here, we're creating a local variable that is going to be creating an object inside this variable. We plug in all the values we're getting from um, from these uh, from these arguments here. We plug in all all these in a variable, and then we put it, the object in the variable into the into our part array, a particle array. And then, because it's a local variable, the variable itself will disappear, but the object exists independently of the variable, so it will still persist in the array. It will be still logged in this array. So it's just a way for us to create a new particle. It's what it says on the tin, so to speak. We're creating a new particle with the specified specified uh, values. So I'm not sure what I'm going to put in type. Um, probably just a number. Yeah. Oh, we see a problem here. Let's, let's call it type e. Um, and then underscore p dot um, m age mage <laughs> uh, equals underscore max h. Ah! Um, max age. That's good. So one thing we also have to add. That's not something that's supplied by the by our argument. But each particle also has to have an age, an actual age, right? So that's something that we also need to have. Yeah. Uh, age. And it starts at age zero. No frames. Uh, it has been on the screen so far. Good. <clears throat> So far, so good. Um, so when we are spawning a trail, we're gonna test this this our function. We, when we're spawning a trail, we're adding a particle. Add part. Um, hmm. Um, let's go x y. Let's go like this x y. Uh, add part x. Y. It's going to be type zero particle, so that's I guess a pixel, and the max age is going to be sixty. Let's 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 keep it around for a second. And that's it. So that will add a particle. Um, so now we actually have to we have to actually show it somewhere. Let's see where we can show it. I would say in an update function, update ball. That's good. So this updates a specific ball. So if it's stuck, we're not going to spawn the particles. But if it's not stuck, then beautiful things happen. Uh, well, uh, where, where 
is it? Uh, let's let's put it at the beginning. Maybe we we're gonna find a better better place to put it. But let's put it all the way uh, before we move anything. Where is it? Update ball there. Um, or you know what? Let's put it at the end. Whatever. Check with ball left the screen. So if it does left the screen, we're not gonna do anything. Hmm. Okay, here we are actually changing the position of the ball, so maybe this would be a good uh, moment to do this. Spawn trail, next x, next y. Uh, trail. Okay, so here we are actually uh, already spawning the particles um, with our trail, but this will make uh, our um, array just fill up with stuff. So what I want to do next is um, I'm going to do the update particles function, and this is where we're going to do the same thing that we did with the bricks, where we're going to go backwards through an array. Now I had like an entire episode explaining to you guys why we we want to maybe go backwards through an array sometimes. And this is exactly what we're gonna do right here as well. So let me see, um, where are we going backwards to an array? What are we doing? Um, maybe an update function. Update game, yeah. Yeah, there we go. For example, we're going through all the pills backwards because sometimes pills gets removed. I'm going to copy this all this pill code. It, it contains a lot of stuff we don't need, but we're going to use it in here. So instead of pill, we're going to go part, uh, do, and then all sorts of other stuff. And then here is also an interesting part where we're actually deleting the the, the pill, and. <clears throat> So this is how we're going to delete the pills, if, if uh, the, the particles uh, when they're too old. And how do we know if they're too old? Well, um, let's go local underscore p. So we're going, we're going to go underscore p equals oops no underscore p p equals um, part. Not dart. What? No! This keyboard. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. Okay. So uh, we're getting the particle from our array. We put it in like local variable so it's easier to write. So we don't have to write parts. You know, blah, blah, blah. So it's, you know, we're just grabbing the particle from the array and we copy, uh, we put it, the reference to that particle in a variable so we can just work with the variable instead of directly into referencing the entry in, in our array. So here we're going to make the particle age now. Dot age um, plus plus equals one. We add one to age, and then we go if underscore p dot age is greater than uh, underscore p dot mage maximum age, then we delete the particle. And else, something else happened. Whatever. <clears throat> so off the bat, so this is kind of like a very basic update function that updates our particles, just makes them age. And if they're too old, we're removing them from, from the function, right? So far, so so nothing that we did, haven't done before. We just like taking all of the elements that we use for pills or for, um, for uh, bricks, and we just applying them to to uh, to individual pixels, like tiny little pixels that will float around and, and move and stuff like that. And here is now the part where the magic happens, where we're going to actually go through all of the particles and draw them on the screen. And so um, we're also going to loot through the particle. I'm not going to do it backwards this time around. And don't, there's no need. So we're going to go one comma part, and that's going to be it. And then we're just gonna uh, do the same. We're gonna grab it from the thing. There's an easier, um, easier loop to do this with. There's a for, uh, for each loop that we can also use. But I like doing this number loop because it kind of like gives you a better understanding of what you're actually doing. Maybe I will show the other loop at some point. 
Um, so um, we're gonna check if underscore p dot type TTP, TPE, right? That's, that's what we said, TPE, right? If that's zero, then end. So pixel particle. And that's kind of like a particle that's supposed to be just one pixel, right? Uh, and then I'm gonna go p set set a pixel underscore p dot uh, x underscore p dot y uh, and then now the color. Uh, let's go set it to ten for now. Later on, each particle will have a different color, but for now that's fine. And that's it. Easy. So now we just need to um, plug these things into our update function. So in the draw function, um, I'm going to put it in draw game because we're not going to draw particles outside of the game. There is a different, oh no, yeah, that's okay. So the problem is now where will the particles appear underneath the bricks over the bricks i think over the bricks might might make sense right so all the way on the on the bottom is that what we do let's put it yeah let's put it here draw parts Draw parts. And then we also need to update the particles. Um, so that's where we are going to update game. Yeah, sure. No, actually, let's update particles always. Because the thing is, like, um, if we change the game mode to like game over weight, for example, uh, we still want the particles to age and to disappear. Uh, and so I think that's it's a good idea to do, do update parts uh, as a general thing that just happens. Let's see if this works. Now, doesn't that look awesome? So it leaves a trail of particles now behind behind the oh, this is so good. It leaves a trail of particles now. The particles are um, like they left every frame, so and they like very like this is a very. Um, they're not very chaotic or anything. They're not fading out or anything. So this is kind of like a very, very simple way of doing a trail. The trail is a, a little bit too long. We can make the particles appear and uh, disappear maybe more quickly. I don't know. Oh. I love it. This is good. So right now um, we have to, like, this very straight line. Let's see how much, how much time do we have for this. Episode. Uh, because I want to change something. So right now we have this very straight line. Um, let's now mess around with the particles. Now we can do some cool th stuff. So for example, the straight line, we want it maybe to trail out a little bit uh, because the particles always are being like created in a very regular fashion and they also disappear in a very regular fashion, which is not what we want maybe. So maybe you wanna, uh, for example, you can start the adding random numbers to the maximum age. Um, so let's, let's do this. So right now the maximum age is 60. I think this was a bit too long. Let's go 30. Uh, plus R and D, it's a number between zero and one. How does R and D, I never, never bothered to figure this out. R and D Pico eight. Maybe we can, we can use a different, because it sometimes behaved weirdly. So I guess this is actually the max. So let's go 15. So now it will, uh, it will the age of the particle will, it will have a bit of a random factor to it. it. It will be at least 30 frames and then plus some number between zero and 15 frames. 
and you will see now that the trail will kind of like randomly trail off now see now it's no longer like a like a very straight the the the, the trailing end at least it is no longer as straight i think that tr it's still a bit too long let's make it even even shorter yeah that's good So this is nice. It's actually really nice. I, I really, already, I almost don't want to change anything about this, but I will. So, um, so the way we're spawning the trail is at the center of the ball right now. But maybe you want to spend, uh, want to make the particles appear all around the, the ball, like or, or not exactly at the center of the ball, but maybe sometimes you know left, maybe sometimes right, maybe just separate it. Um, spread around a little bit around the trajectory of the ball so it's not just at the center of the ball but actually like it looks like the entire ball is maybe leaving those particles behind uh we can do that as well so uh we're gonna do <clears throat> so can we do this like this um yeah, okay, let's just go local uh, underscore uh, dx or ox offset x uh, equals. Mm, how are we going to do this? We're going to be using a sine and cosine function. I know it's not probably not necessary, but uh, we're still going to do this. Uh, we're going to do an angle that's going to be um, just a number from 0 to 1. Again, uh, Pico 8 works with a very def weird definition of angles, where, uh, which I love, by the way, uh, uh, which is one, a 0 is 0 degrees and 1 is 360 degrees. So if we just make it like this, we, g we have a random, random angle. And then dx is going to be sine underscore ang. And now we can add a radius. Um, do we have a radius of the ball? We s are we saving this? Are we saving this for each individual ball or are we saving? I think we have a we have a radius for for all of the balls. Yeah, ball R. So let's let's get this. Uh, sine times where is times? There we go. Ball R. And dy is going to be the cosine. The reason why you're using sine and cosine, you could also use, uh, you could just do a ran random R and D, like you could also make it look like, let me copy this real quick. You could also do like R and D uh, ball underscore R. That would also work. Almost, I think you have you have to make sure that it also goes in a negative direction. But you, you could also do it like this. But the problem is like then the particles will be in a square pattern, will be around the ball in a square pattern. Um, but you want them to be in a round pattern. And the more particles you add, the more it will be clear that it's actually a square, and that that doesn't look look so hot. So I'm gonna do it like this. And then I'm gonna add these guys, these um, offsets, to our new particle. Okay, so let's see how this works. See? Now the entire ball is leaving particles behind. This is good. Uh, maybe a bit um maybe a bit too crazy. Maybe let's let's uh, tone it down by zero point six or so. Maybe and we're not gonna want to go all the way to the edge of the ball. Maybe um, it's more like a comet, so to speak. Uh, that's a little bit better. Uh, also, we see that this works with multiple balls because each ball is leaving each, each, each own particle. I like it.
was just watching it to see if, if there's something I can improve. Well, another thing we could improve of obviously always is um, um, change the color. So that's something we haven't done here yet, but maybe uh, we add now. So <clears throat> the particle has an age, but we maybe each particle should have a color as well. Um, so let's let's say coal equals, uh, and then we have to actually, actually when we add a particle, we also have to add the color. Um, it's gonna be ten. Now I'm thinking. Uh, oh no! Uh, actually, um, call. There we go. Uh, I, I was. I was. I'm. I'm thinking too much. I'm thinking too much. So now the particle color is controlled. Uh, will be controlled by actual variables. So we can actually have different curly colored particles as well. I'm um, just making sure that. Um, uh, yeah, the color of the particle has to be actually controlled by this. So when we're drawing the particle here. Uh, here, then we actually have to plug in the, the code here. And also when we're spawning a particle, when we're going doing add part, we are going to have to add uh, the 11 in here. Actually, we're going to add the 4 in here, so we make make sure that we actually going to actually create, yeah, we're now creating different colored particles. We also see that the particles are above the ball. I don't like that. I want them to be behind the ball. So maybe... Um, so maybe you're going to rearrange the draw function. How are we drawing the function here? So first we're drawing the ball, right? Yeah. First we're drawing the ball. So let us draw the ball later. And this, yeah. So the ball should be above the bricks and everything. Makes sense too. I don't know why I'm not doing this. Yeah. Just rearranging a little bit this. So first we're drawing bricks, then we're drawing pills. Then we're drawing particles, then we're drawing balls, and then we're drawing pad. And finally, we're drawing the um, uh, UI. Yeah, so now the particles are behind the ball. That's, that's better. <coughs> okay. So yeah, now we can control the color. So we can, if, if we set it to 11. <laughs> which, which color was it? Ah, I forgot. Uh, 10 we wanted to set it to 10 and so now you can like mess around a little bit so for example what if does it work what if, if mm, what if the color um let's make it a simple version because the this episode is getting too too old too long now what if there's an old color so we're gonna go old call so if the particle is ending, uh, nearing the the end of its age, of its maximum age, it will change the color to a different color, right? That would be nice. So let's go like this. Mm -hmm. uh, let's call it old call. Right, and then in our update function, we're gonna see how close we are to the age. So this is the, this is what gets executed when the particle is still alive. So we're gonna see if um, uh, p age p p dot age divided by underscore p mage maximum age if that thing is greater than let's see let's say zero five let, if if we're if we're at, a, at the midlife crisis if the particle has a midlife crisis um then i'm gonna put this oops uh, oh. this keyboard i love it i love it 
So if the, um, if the particles are at a midlife crisis, so to speak, then we're going to go um, particle dot call equals um, particle. Ah. Uh, how do we call it? Old call? Old call? Old call. We just set the color of the particle to a different color. Mm -hmm. Um, one more thing, when we're adding the particle, we actually have to also say what the old particle should look like. And I think for old particle, we're going to use this bright uh, blue, like this. So let's see. See, now the particles are fading out. It's good, it's good. Maybe not the blue, maybe what, what else can we do? Maybe an orange? Nine? It's good. It's good. I love it. I love it. Okay, so this is it for this episode. We started with Outward Particles. Particles are on the screen and are beautiful. I love them. Let's do some more stuff with particles. Let's see, for example, if we can make uh, the blocks burst into particles. That would be nice. Um, let's maybe see if we can tweak maybe some particles. Let's see about that. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.